What is up everyone? I'm coming on here for a couple of plays for the day and it is wild card Wednesday on sleeper. We also have this discount on this Georgia game, kind of a random discount, but we will take it. Um, if you guys don't know on sleeper, they give discounts every Wednesday and Sunday. And all you have to do is take the two discounts they give you every Wednesday and Sunday. And I've made hundreds of dollars this year doing that. You know, I've probably made $800, $900 this year, just taking the wild card Wednesday and sleeper Sunday discounts. It's literally four plays every single week you have to do. And and again, that's like five minutes of work on on Wednesdays and Sundays, just clicking on your phone, clicking a different app. Um, so if you don't have Sleeper, I really recommend it. You can use code PAID. That is my code. It helps me out. Um, it'll also help you out because you'll get a deposit match and you can just take my plays um, that, I, that I send out. And again, you can make hundreds of dollars um, easily doing this. So I will have plays for these two plays um, or for these two discounts right here. We got Josh Allen, Tyree Kill discounts, and then we do have Carson Beck right here. Um, if you guys are new to the channel or don't know, I do a lot of correlated betting and I'll kind of get into what that means, but I do correlated betting and that how is how we have became so profitable over the past couple of months. This is over a three month period right here. We are up close to 300 units over three months, which is absolutely incredible. Um, find me anyone else on the internet who has you know, done 80, 85 units every single month very consistently you can see this graph is very very consistent on, on on what it's telling and i track absolutely everything so every single play that i send out on these youtube plays and my vip plays are on this graph right here again up over a thousand bets over that time period, I do maybe you know 10 to 12 bets every single day. Uh, volume is another thing that is very key. Um, and yeah, you know we've honestly we've had a rough couple of days. The weekend was super unlucky. Could have hit so many more four out of fours than we did. Um, had a, just a rough couple of days. But every time we have a rough couple of days, we always go on an insane hot streak. And I'm calling it right now. We're gonna go on a hot streak um, because it's just it's time to go on a hot streak, you guys. And I'm coming into this week with vengeance. Um, honestly, I thought Sunday was gonna be a massive day for us. I thought Sunday. Day we were going to go up 30, 35 units, maybe even one of the biggest days we ever had. And we went down like 10 units because so many of those players, they just did not do good. The quarterback receiver duos, so many quarterbacks threw for like only like 150 yards and stuff like that. But again, let's move on to this week. And um, yeah, I'm coming back for vengeance. I'm ready to, to slaughter prize picks. Um, but yeah, you can see we've obviously we've we have our ups and downs, right? Um, this is sports betting at the end of the day. I'm not going to come on here and say, hey, this is my absolute lock of the day where it's 100 percent uh, guaranteed to profit um, and, and and hit, right? Um, I'm also not going to come on here and tell you guys that we profit every single day. Every single day we go up 10 units, stuff like that, right? Um, those guys are lying to you. There's no way you can do that in sports betting. It's all about being consistent over time and looking at it in a long time frame. And that's what I'm all about here on this channel. So again, everything is right in front of you. Um, all the numbers are right in front of you. You can see, you know, we have peaks, we have valleys, we have, you know, peaks, valleys, but over time we are up, um, going up and up and up. Um, so again, uh, you know, we average right around 70 to 80 units a month, which is incredible. Um, so if you guys don't believe me, um, where is it? I think I have one. Yeah, this was last month. So this was in August right here. Um, so this was August. We went up 82 units, which is just phenomenal right here. Again, if you're just a $5 better, which is the absolute minimum that you can put on bets, um, you'd be up $440. But I know a lot of you guys, you know, $5 betters, you turn into $10 betters, then $20, then $50 betters, right? Some of you guys already bet $50 and stuff like that. So again, this is just one month um, that you can take advantage of. So um, let's go ahead and get into the picks. I'm going to have three picks. I'm giving you guys a bonus pick. Actually, te technically it's four picks because we have two sleeper picks. So two on prize picks and then two on sleeper. Um, first play of the day is going to be with this Carson Beck uh, promo right here. So we're going to go Beck over pass yards, and then we're going to go Arian Smith to go over 32.5 um, receiving yards. So um, this is very correlated. The more that Beck throws, the more the better that Beck does. Let's say he gets you know 250 yards, um, close to 300 yards, stuff like that. Then it's likely that Smith is going to go over his projection. Um, Smith, you know, I know, uh, love it is Georgia's top receiver, but really in the past two games, Smith has been Beck's top receiver. Um, he's gotten the most targets, gotten the most reception. So I'm going to go to him. I just think he's more consistent and his line is like 20 yards lower. So it's kind of a win-win right there. Um, but yeah, 32 yards is really low for a receiver, especially someone who's getting like seven, eight targets a game. Um, he could honestly get this in just like one catch, right? So um, these are very correlated together though. That is the main thing I do want to hammer home is that the better that Beck does, the better that Smith does. And the same thing down here, the... Uh, this is also correlated right here. We got to wait till Sunday. So hopefully this hits on, um, this is actually happening Saturday. And then um, we will have this paired up for Sunday to look forward to Sunday at noon. 
this is my favorite play of the week, you guys. Um, I'm going to probably come on tomorrow and do a uh, best plays of college football, best plays of the NFL like I did last week. Um, I'm telling you right now, I'll go over it again tomorrow's video. Um, but this is my favorite play of the week. Sam Darnold, this line is way too high for him. He came off probably the game of his life. I mean, everyone was talking about Sam Darnold that he had like an amazing, amazing game. Um, he only got 200. I think it, he got like 205 passing yards or something like that. And that was against the Giants, who are the worst, if not the second worst, if we consider the Panthers being the worst team. Um, they're probably the second worst team in the NFL. He got 205 yards in like the game of his life against the second worst team in the NFL. Now he's coming up. His line is 25 passing yards higher than apparently like the best game of his life. Um, and he's facing the 49ers, right? So if he only got 200 yards against the Giants and that was like the best game he's ever played. Now, I know they probably ran a lot in the fourth quarter and yada, yada, yada. But again, do I really think he's going to get over 230 passing yards and go over this line against the 49ers when we just saw Aaron Rodgers get like 160 yards? We just saw Dak Prescott get 160 yards last week. We saw so many great quarterbacks only get 160 pass yards um, when their team even won, right? So, um, you know, that is why I'm going with Sam Sam Darnold. Now, Justin Jefferson, I know this is probably going to be un, um, un, unpopular. I know he's amazing. I know he's the number one receiver in the NFL right now. That is that is what I believe. But again, the worst that Sam Darnold does, if Sam Darnold comes out and throws 150 pass yards, which honestly, I think that would honestly be a good day for him against the 49ers, um, then it's very unlikely out of those 150 pass yards that Justin Jefferson is going to go over 80 receiving yards, right? That's going to mean that he's going to need more than 50% of the share right there. So um, that is why I'm going less, less. Again, these are very, very, very correlated um, in the the, uh, the game on Sunday. So going to have to wait for this a little bit. I don't like the payout shift that's only 8.5x, but it's the best I could do um, with kind of the lines that we're up right now. So hopefully we get more um, like pass completions and receptions and all those sort of lines that come out later, um, probably by tomorrow. That's why I'm going to wait to do that video tomorrow. Um, and then I do have a little bit of a bonus pick. I wasn't going to put this one in. Um, I did send this play out to the VIP. And, um, you know, you guys know, I'm always, I'm always cooking stuff up for you guys. I'm always researching. I'm always trying to find the best ways to correlate things to, um, limit payout shifts and stuff like that. And I think I found an incredible, incredible way to limit out, pay, limit payout shifts. So this might be the only time that you see a soccer play, um, in the, in the next couple of weeks on the free plan. But I know if, if we can keep doing this on the VIP, that we are going to make a ton of money with this. Um, and this is soccer correlation with pass attempts. So, um, don't mind this one right here. I'll kind of show you why I have this one right here, but I'm just going to keep that small for now. Um, this is a 10 X, so no payout shift whatsoever. And we have Dortmund versus Hedenheim. Okay. Dortmund versus Hedenheim. This is happening at Friday, uh, Friday around, uh, 1 central time right here. And we have a defender on Dortmund and then the goalkeeper on Dortmund and then Hedenheim. I think I'm pronouncing that name, right? Um, we have them going less. Um, we have a defender on that team and then we have a goalkeeper on that team. So we have less pass attempts down here and then more pass attempts up here. So pretty much this is correlated because, um, if, the Dortmund, which is the better team, if they have more possession of the ball, they're going to be passing around. They're going to be passing around the back, the defender to the goalkeeper. And again, you know, if uh, this goalkeeper, if he passes it to the defender and and then the, the 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 defender passes it back to the goalkeeper, um, then that would mean that that is two pass attempts, right? That would be a pass attempt for uh, Nicholas Sewell, and then that would be a pass attempt for Kobel right here. So again, very correlated because these guys are passing back and forth. You, you guys have all watched soccer, I'm sure, and they pass it around, you know, and, and as more people are passing to each other, these are very correlated. So I've been doing this for a couple weeks now with pass attempts. It's been working really well. Um, pretty much what that means is they'll e either go red and red or over and over. So they're, they'll they will either go less and less or over and over based on how the game is going, right? So um, if Dortmund, they have like no possession or something like that, if that ends up happening, then the lesses will probably hit. You know, these guys will be very correlated and, and their lines will probably fall like right around here. But if they do have a ton of possession, their lines will go way over. Now, obviously, if one team is possess possessing the ball a lot, that means the other team will not be possessing the ball a lot. So again, defender, goalkeeper, if these guys are not possessing the ball a lot, then these guys will go under their pass attempts right here. Um, again, Dortmund's the must much better team. That is why uh, these lines are higher for this team right here. Um, so again, there is no payout shift for this play right here. This is why I'm super excited about it um, because it is defenders and goalkeepers. And a lot of my job, if you guys don't know, 
is to avoid these payout shifts, right? So I'll show you this and do not take this play. I'm just showing this as an example right here, but this is for a different game. It's similar things. You guys can like zoom in and, and do it here, but it's it's same thing here where it's like one team playing another team, less pass yards, more pass, uh, uh, less pass attempts, more pass attempts, right? This is payout shifted. What, what I really want to draw you guys attention to, this is payout shifted 6.5 X. So we're getting a 10 X right here, but prize picks is only giving you a 6.5 X right here. The only difference, the only difference is that for this play, we're taking midfielder defender, midfielder defender, instead of goalkeeper defender. So again, do not take this play, this play that I'm moving around right here. Do not take it. I, I took it just as an example. And then I instantly canceled it just to get the screenshot. Don't take this play. But again, prize picks is saying this should only be 6.5 X right here all because we're just taking midfielder defender. Now, again, I would probably rather take midfielder defender because they probably pass the ball a lot more than goalkeepers, um, but we can take goalkeeper defender and goalkeeper defender and get no payout shift whatsoever. So again, prize picks is probably going to patch this. Um, that's why I'm going to mostly send it out to the VIP. So again, these plays are going to be in my VIP. My um, A lot of the stuff that I really think is the best of the best is going to be in the VIP. But again, all these free plays I take with my own money and I, I also send them out to the free plays and stuff like that. So again, you guys are getting um, a insanely good strategy right here that um, I've been I've been looking at very, very closely. So we're definitely going to take this again when prize picks is only offering 6.5 X on something down here um, and we're able to get 10 X with just slight differences. You know that something is really good right here. So again, really like this play. I would lock this in for Friday um, and then let's go through these pretty quickly right here on uh, sleeper right so if you guys don't have sleeper again download it um it's the easiest way to make money like again josh allen's line is like 230 240 and they're uh reducing it to like under 200 so gonna take josh allen gonna take tyreek hill pretty obviously and then we're going to take uh i think her name is uh chinity chinity carter to go under 21.5 points and then we're going to take um sorry guys that uh, Matthew Solka, Matthew Solka to go under 1.5 pass touchdowns. I found these on the daily grind fantasy optimizer. Let me hop in there and show you guys exactly how I found these plays today. All right, you guys. So here I am on the daily grind fantasy optimizer. I'm under the sleeper tab right here, as you can see, and you can see that the optimizer is pretty much showing you the best plays right now on sleeper. Now you're going to see a lot of red right here because sleeper is actually not a great app to take bets on. The only reason I take bets on sleeper is because they give out the, the promos. And I told you guys all I take are the promos on Wednesdays and Sundays, right? There's no reason for me to take other picks on this app um, other than if they're giving out giving you out promos. So um, something unfortunate is I think the Carter line is actually gone. So that's something that uh, these apps will do is they'll actually take lines off if they're too good. Um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't a, it wasn't like an amazing play. It wasn't in the green or anything. So um, you can take pretty much any of these plays, but I will talk about Matthew Solka right here. Um, I like this a lot. This was actually the best play um, because under pass touchdowns at 1.5, um, you can see see that uh, sorry sleeper is offering it at minus 137 so that's the odds they're giving you at um, on FanDuel the same exact odds right here or the same exact line sorry is at minus 172 you can see on BetMGM this line is at minus 165 so these two huge books right here FanDuel and BetMGM they're giving it to you at uh, minus 172 or if, if you were to take it on these books, um, you would have it at minus 172 or minus 165. But on Sleeper, you can just come over to Sleeper and get it at minus 137. So a really great play. Um, you can also pair that other one up. I think it was... Uh I think it was the Josh Allen one that I, uh, that I had uh, with Carter, but you can do Tyler Bass under kicking points. Um, that's a little bit of neg negative correlation, so maybe stay away from that. You can do Odyssey Sims um, over points. This is a good one here. Um, Max Freed to go over hits allowed 5.5. This is another good play. Um, I'd probably do this one right here. Minus 108 on sleeper and then minus 130, uh, minus 123 on pinnacle, minus 130 on DraftKings and BetMGM. So you can see right here, I'm already finding plays and it's really easy to do it. Um, it's really easy to find plays with the daily ground fantasy optimizer. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a little bit of a bonus pick for soccer and you guys understand the correlation there. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or anything in the comments and I'll I'm always willing to um, answer you guys. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's have a great day um, today. Let's have a great day tomorrow um, and look out for a video tomorrow. Me going more in depth about my favorite plays for NFL weekend and for college football this weekend. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching.